Today on our 2017 Jeep Renegade Trailhawk, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the DrawType Max Frame Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. Offering the 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, its part number is 76021. Here's what your hitch is going to look like installed. As you can see, it's going to be pretty visible on the rear of the vehicle. We'll have that cross tube. It's going to go all the way across the rear and then up to where it connects with the frame. In the middle, we're going to have our receiver tube opening. This is a class three hitch, so we'll have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Makes it extremely versatile. I think on the Renegade, probably your bike racks, cargo carriers, accessories like that are what you're gonna see the most of. And just about all of those are gonna come in a class three variety. Of course, for your towing needs, there's also several different ball mounts you can choose from. Just wanna make sure you get a rise that's gonna accommodate whatever type trailer you're gonna be using. Now to hold all those accessories in place, you always wanna use the larger pinhole. It's located a little bit closer towards the front of the vehicle. It's 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. See, there's a good amount of room there. So no matter what type of accessory that you choose, as long as it's rated class three, it should work. So your standard hitch pins and clips, locking hitch pins, even anti-rattle devices. That smaller hole is only going to be for use with the J-Pin stabilization system, which is a form of anti-rattle device which goes in there and kind of locks everything in position and keeps it from moving around too much. You'll have a plate style safety chain connection point here. It's gonna be plenty of room, as you can see with like a standard trailer hook. It's gonna go in there and connect without it too much of an issue. It doesn't really roll around as freely as what they do on some. And you can even go to the larger style clevis hook, but behind a Renegade, probably not gonna have a trailer that size to mess with. There is a small tab welded on here with three pre-drilled holes. If you decide to run wiring to the outside of your vehicle, this would be a great point for attachment. Part number 18144 would bolt right up to that, give you a nice solid four pole holder. However, you do want to keep in mind, typically the wiring is designed to stay in the back of the Renegade. So unless you're going to come out through a grommet, your wiring's probably going to be inside the vehicle. Now the hitch is going to offer a 675 pound tongue weight rating. That's the maximum downward force we can put at our receiver tube opening. It also gives us a 4,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That would be the total weight of your trailer and anything you were to load up on it. It's not been rated for use with weight distribution, so you want to stay away from the spring bars or the torsion bars. And you definitely want to check the owner's manual to see what the tow rating on the Renegade is and not exceed that. Now a few measurements you'll find helpful in selecting your ball mount, bike rack, or cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening. You're going to have about 11 and 3 quarters of an inch. That being said, it'd be wise to choose accessories with a raise in the shank to help give you better ground clearance. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's going to be about five inches. Now depending on which model you have, we're working on the Trailhawk model. So we've got a pretty low pan here. We're going to lower our exhaust just with two bolts. We've got a 13 millimeter bolt here and on the other side. That's going to come down just an inch or so, buys us a little bit of space and it's going to rest right on this rear panel. Now, if yours doesn't have this panel, it's not going to rest on there. You'll want to use a support strap further up underneath the vehicle. You can connect to the suspension component, suspension component, just a cam buckle strap is typically what we use. Now on that hanger, we'll use a 13 millimeter socket, remove that bolt. See how that allows us to rotate this down a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to remove a few bolts. We've got one located right here, one just behind it, and then the one that's kind of hidden there behind that bumper. You can see it right here on the bottom. So we've got one on the bottom and then two on the sides. Now if you don't have a Trailhawk model, these are probably just going to be rubber plugs that you need to pull and then you'll bring through your carriage bolt. And to gain access, you're going to drill about a one inch hole right up through there. It'll allow you to get your components up and in the frame. Now to get these out, you want to use a 21 millimeter socket. The instructions do call for the removal of this panel. At least there's a little nylon 10 millimeter nut right here you can remove. I don't think we're going to need to for our, our application, but if we do, again, that nut's right up behind there. Now we need to bend the rear edge of the heat shield in a little bit. I'm going to make a small cut right over here on this corner. 
we should be able to roll that over. And just like that, that'll give plenty of room for a bracket to sit. We're, gonna, we're also going to trim off this caulking that you see. Now we can head over to the passenger side and we'll repeat that same process there. Now we've got our bracket that we need to make a slight modification to. Our hitch, once this is rotated up in position, is going to sit right along this line. So from those two cut-ins, I'm just going to cut straight across right there. That should be what you're left with. When you rotate that up, it's not going to stick out past the end of the frame there. Now with the help of an extra set of hands, we're going to get our hitch lifted into position. You'll kind of have to guide this tab up over your exhaust to get it up there to the frame rail where we got it cleaned off. And once we have that in position, we're going to reuse the bolts we removed. And once we've got four or five good turns on them, you just be able to let your hitch rest there while you get your other hardware in place. Now we're ready to go through and we're going to get all those fasteners snugged up. Now your best bet for getting in here is going to be to pull off that nylon nut we were talking about. A lot of times you can just take them off by hand. And then this one Phillips screw right here in the back. Now we should be able to pull that in. Kind of both directions there. Now we'll want to start torquing our bolts down. The specifications we want to torque them to will be listed in your instructions, so just check there. Now we also want to get our exhaust hangers put back up in place. like that. Now we'll bring our plastic cover. We need to get that back over the stud. Just thread that plastic nut back on. Typically you can just push it in until it stops and that'll be fine. Tuck that up. We'll put our Phillips screw in. With our exhaust back in place, that's going to complete our installation of the Draw Type Max Frame Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number 76021 on our 2017 Jeep Renegade.